No one needs a lecture on the importance of transportation or the movement of people from place to place. It's one of the basic necessities of life, no matter the region, area, across the globe. Even though technology has helped reduce the movement of people with great strides in telecommunication, but virtually 80 to 90 percent of the entire population move around using a means of transportation at least once in a week. There are many means of transport like ships, airplanes, car, buses, and so on. Cars have the main transport means for many people, making it an essential asset, especially in areas where there are good road networks. Every country or region has its rules and regulation when it comes to car purchase, driving, and maintenance. Hello guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. My name is Aremulu Shego and if this is your very first time of watching, please do us a favor, smash the subscribe button and make sure you leave your notification bell turned on so you get notified each time we post a new video. In this video, I'll be finding answers to some questions relating to driving, buying and renting of cars in the nation of Turkey. I spoke to the first African-owned car rental agency in Turkey, popularly known as the Prime Agency. If you are in Turkey and you would like to buy a brand new car or rent a car for any purpose, wedding, airport pickups and so on, or you have a car and you would like to change it for a new one, please contact the Prime Car Renters today and they are government approved and ready to help you meet your need. All right, guys, if you are ready to find out about cars in Turkey, then let's go. Um, because the tax we pay in Turkey makes the cars expensive. Now, in the sense that cars in Turkey does not lose value, number one. And even if you buy a car very expensive compared to other countries, you can still sell it more than the price you buy the cars. So that's one reason. And Turkey, road have a good roads their facility their maintenance towards cars is very nice that's why even there's no in turkey there's no difference between a brand new car and uh, a second hand like this car is a zero car now the difference between this being brand new and this being second hand is just maybe twenty thousand. same model same year but kilometer different maybe twenty thousand dollars differences yes for example now we have a mercedes glk 350 2010 model. If you check internet Nigeria, let me give you an example like the one I bought in Abuja. I bought it for six million Nigeria currency, which is about which is less than fifteen thousand dollars. Now that same car in Turkey here, you cannot get it less than twenty six to twenty eight million naira. Now in the same that same car, same year, same kilometer, but country difference. The cars are expensive. Talk like I said because of the maintenance of the car is very expensive. And cars does not lose value in Turkey. You know, like in Nigeria, when you register a car today and you to sell it tomorrow, the prices change. But in Turkey, even if you register that car, it does not lose value. That's why the car keep price keep increasing and keep changing. Now, the cheapest car in Turkey, if you want to buy, you should budget nothing less than 12 million naira. Now, in the sense, I have to look for a Clio, a smaller car, maybe Nissan, okay, Micra. In these cars, you can get for 12 million, 13 million, like a CH Harrow Toyota Hybrid, hybrid, and you can get it for 15 million naira. That's the, cheap, the cheapest car for a start in Turkey here. It's starting from 12 million naira upward. In dollars, now in dollar, we should be looking at with this current rate now, we should look at about 25,000 US dollars. As a foreigner, if you want to buy a car in Turkey, the first thing you need to consider is to have your resident permit. Now. In some cases, some people might ask, what about if I don't want to stay as a friend, I just want to buy a car, acquire a car, and then go back. Now, you can buy a car using your tax number. It's in Turkey, it's called Vege Direct, like Vege Numara, which means your tax number, your duty number. So with that tax number, you translate your passport to Turkish, you can buy a car on your passport name. But it's risky in Turkey because without your resident permit, insurance does not cover you. So that's the more reason why before thinking of buying a car in Turkey, your first priority should be to acquire your resident permit first, then you buy a car. When you buy a car, like this car is a brand new car now, this car without a plate number. Now, I must give you an example. Even a zero kilometer car in Turkey already have a plate number registered with the car. Now, all you need to do is just 
Like, let's assume if the if you buy this car being a Turkish citizen, you don't have to pay for plate number again. But if you buy it, you have to change this plate number from Turkish plate number to foreigner, which start with MP, MN, MD, you know, M, like you have to start with M something. Now, the cost of plate number in Turkey here is just less, just like a $10 to get the plate number. And when you buy a car, a brand new car, what you need to consider is, there's what we call MTV, okay? There's something we call MTV, which is the Moto Task Vege. Now, it's paid twice a year. You have to pay it in January, and you have to pay it in July or June, July. Okay, this is first one. And after purchasing a car, you have to pay traffic uh, tax. That is very compulsory. If you don't pay it, police can stop you and collect your car from you. Even they can, police have the right to seize the car from you. Trust me. Now, if you don't have your traffic, um, your traffic insurance on your car, and what we call casco in Africa, in Nigeria, we know it as comprehensive insurance. It's called casco in Turkey. Now, if eventually you have a, you had an accident, now your traffic will pay that person car that you had accident with. But on your car, it's your casco that can face it. If that car is stolen or that car is maybe got burnt, casco is responsible for it. But for the insurance, it's either both for accident and for the Turkish government, it's very, very important that you have those two insurance on your car. And also, what, what, what we call HGS and OGS. So this is a toll gate fee. It's a sticker you put in front of your car. Some comes in green format, which is OGS, and the other one comes in yellow format, which is HGS. And you, when you pay it, maybe like once a week or once a month, according to how you use your car toll gate. Most people don't pass toll gate, so they don't pay for it. But like, let me give you an example. A few weeks ago, a friend of mine had a car in Turkey here, a Mercedes Benz. He forgot to put HGS on his car. Now the government puts, there's a, uh, there's a punishment they put on it. We, we have to use lawyer to get that punishment clear from the car. Without that, we can't sell that car. You can't sell it. And the government have the right to collect the car from you. So it's very important after purchasing a car, the mo you look, those things look very small, but they are very important. You can't own a Turkish government and scot free. So you need your HGS, your OGS, your TAS, and your traffic and your casco. Okay, now, the CAS insurance is very, very important in Turkey. It is saying that one of them is called casco, while the other one is called traffic insurance. They are very important. Now, the most important one is the traffic because this belongs to government. As a foreigner who wants to purchase a car in Turkey, you should have it in your mind that, okay, you should spare some funds. It's very cheap. Like both the traffic and um, the casco, even with the HGS and Toge, is less than $1,000. And it's paid once a year. This is paid once a year. So you don't, it's not something you pay every week. No, you just pay it every year, once a year. So it's very important and every foreigner needs to pay for those insurance just to prevent harassment from the government and all that. Yes. Now we have, when you buy a car, there's something we call Moine, okay? It's a general service that is issued for the for a brand new car. It's once in three years, okay? Now for maybe like a car that is below two, three years, it's every two, two years. You take it to the government. When you buy a car, I advise, I urge every foreigner who is driving a car in Turkey here, to check the Arusat. There is something that is written there. The date is going to expire, is written there. So if eventually you did not take your car for the general checking, okay, when that date expires, there's a punishment you have to pay to government. And if you are driving your car without taking that car for a minor checkup, the traffic police have the right to take that car back from you. So it's very important. It's not, it's, it's something of, for a brand new car, like a zero kilometer car, is once in three years. After the first one is three years, then second, the continuously is two, two years. Then if the car is below one or two years, then it's two, two years, you have to take it for a general service. Now, when you want to buy a car that is already registered in Turkey and use it, it's not a brand new car, you have to take it to expert, auto expert. Now, those auto experts will put the car into a, into, um, a place where it's like um, a show or a workshop. Now, the, they have some, uh, tools that they use to check the cars, the um, 
They will check the tire, the brake, the body, the car accident, if there's maybe paint on the body. It's called auto expert. They will check everything about the car. Now, they will tell you this car had accident before. The parts are original or the parts has been changed. So that is the first thing you need to do. It's very cheap. To take your car to that place is like $50. Now, they will check everything for you, including the performance of the car. They will tell you this car has problem or this car does not have problem. Do this and they will give you advice. They will advise you. Like, if you wish to buy, it's up to you. Now, after taking the auto expert advice, so if you now choose to buy the car, willingly, then you have to maybe face the consequences if anything happens afterwards. When I started buying car in Turkey, I started with um, Peugeot, which is, was um, 2019 model. Then I moved to Mercedes, then I moved to other cars like Toyota, I moved to uh, Megan, Renault, but the best of all is Peugeot. Now, in the sense that, from 2019 till today, the Peugeot prices, if you note every year, it does not lose value. Now, the car we purchased 190,000 tele, which is approximately, as has then, it was about $30,000. The same car, being second hand, can be sold now, maybe like four to $50,000. Now, with this car, we have used it for like two years, but the value does not lose. Now, Peugeot Comfort is equal to Range Rover. Now, the comfort inside is same like a Range Rover. It's just the marker that is different. Now, Peugeot parts are very cheap. And the comfort is there. The parts are cheap. It's easy to maintain. When you take it to service, it's very easy to maintain. But when compared to Benz and other cars, Benz is a is very loose car. And um, the comfort is there. Compared, but the parts are very expensive. You can't, it's very difficult to maintain. So I recommend to people, if you want to buy a car for personal use, for family purpose, I recommend if you have the phone, go for Peugeot. It's one of the best cars in Turkey. If I you want to buy a car from a foreigner to a foreigner, like two foreigners, it can be from any country, doesn't matter, it must not be Nigeria. Now, you can't just, you know, in Nigeria, there's something we do. You can just call somebody to do a change of ownership for you, right? Now, in Turkey, you have to go to Nota office. There's a place called Nota office, notary office. It's from there, the nota will stand like advocate between you and the seller. Maybe probably with a translator if you don't speak Turkish. They will ask you, are you willing to sell your car to this person? He or she will say yes. And they will ask, have you paid your money? He or she will say yes, I have paid, I have received my money, fine. After that, then the no document, your previous document will be given to the nota. Now, the nota will not issue a new document to you. So, that they, they are the only one that have the right to do a change of ownership in Turkey here. We can't do it from friend to friend. If even as a foreigners, a foreigners are not allowed to drive a foreign a, another foreigner's car. It must be made that either your wife or your children, outsiders are not allowed to drive a foreigner's car. So if you buy a car being a foreigner, it's you're only entitled to drive that car alone, or your wife or your children. Out, another person can drive it. So automatically you can't transfer. Your, you can't give your car to somebody else to drive. Talk about changing the ownership like French to French, you can't do this. When you enter Turkey, you have six months right to use your foreign driving license. Now, after six months, you have to go and register for a Turkey driving license. This Turkey driving license is the cost is about 3,500 tele. You have to go, um, go to driving school, uh, write the examination, practical and theory. If you pass, I also went, they have 10 years driving license myself. When I came to Turkey, I was having Cyprus inter a license, but it was not, I couldn't use it in Turkey. I have to go to driving school and I write examination, go for the practical. That's part I can drive. I still have to go for the practical to take the license. So if you pass the exam, they will give you the license. If you don't pass, you have four chance to try. You can keep trying until you eventually pass one day. So you only have six months to drive with your license, and after six months, you have to get the Turkish license. Uh, like I said, if it's not more than six months that you enter the country, you can go anywhere. But for, your, for the purpose, if the car belongs to you, you can go anywhere. But if the car is not yours, you have, they will limit it to some places. Like my company, if you rent a car in my company, I give you 100 kilometer per day. So you know, 100 kilometers, you can't drive outside Belituzu to maybe to Aksaray, back to Aksaray, like 
you can go or do or you can't go to busa you can't go to edene no because before you go and come it's already more than 100 kilometers so for a, your personal car yes you have you have the right to go everywhere but for renter you can't go outside istanbul just within the city now the first one is you have to you must have your resident permit your passport must be trusted to turkish now then you have to go get eye checkup like a medical checkup for your eye that your, your sight seeing is still okay is good then they'll have to ask you for your blood group maybe if the like case of emergency because they'll have to put all those things in your driving uh, in your um, driving license to be stated there okay this person maybe in case of the reason why they want your blood group because if accidents happen they will know who to call okay this person they need to be positive a positive you know to donate blood that's the reason why they need all those blood tests and eye tests and all that so if you have all these documents your diploma or your master degree any kind of certificate you have before will be trusted to turkish then you cannot register to a driving screen turkey the current price it varies it changes now during winter cars are very cheap to rent during summer cars are more expensive to rent because of the demand is high and you know when we started this business we started with a party 300 tele less than 50 dollars then but now it go gradually gradually from step to step car prices are expensive the car we, we bought last year being maybe like a thirty thousand dollar same car now we are putting it for like sixty thousand dollars you cannot expect the company not just my company every other company to give out that same car at the same price so every year as the car prices are changing the rental price are so changing as well i offer the best so the cars i only i go with benz and Peugeot. Let's say um, less than hundred dollars per day. Let's say fifth. Um, depending if you take for a long time, sixty dollars to hundred dollars, depending on how many days, how many weeks, is it per day, or one month, two weeks. Yeah, one of the biggest challenges I've been having for the past years and my experience in rental is most foreigners refuse to go out with their passport. Now, in the sense that when you rent a car and you don't have an international, you don't have a license, you are going with international driving license, you need to go with your passport, your resident permit, and your driving license. Now, most people, most, especially, sorry to use one, most Nigerians choose not to go out with their license, with their permit, and with their passport. And how can you drive without going, without any document on you? So a lot of challenges, there are sometimes police will call me at 1 a.m., 2 a.m., 3 a.m., asking me, yeah, this car belongs to you or your wife. Where is this guy driving? Where, does he have a license, you know? So I urge the foreigners listening to us, watching us, please, if you want to rent a car, always go with your food document, your passport, your driving license, and your permit must always be with you. It's something you don't have to drop at home. And most of them drink and drive. You know, right from the one, this drink and drive is always a thing that they'll be saying, don't drink and drive. But we something, no, don't, if you don't think about your life, think about this the life of the next person beside you, the next driver, the next car. If what will happen to, if you eventually hit that car, what will happen to the family of that people, you know? So now, on that thing we have been having with a foreigner say is drink and drive. Now, if you are drunk, for Christ's sake, you take a taxi and go home. You don't have to drive. Now, our police have called me many times. This guy is drunk. Why is he driving? You know, this has been the challenges we have faced for the past years. Is the most important one is please always go out with your driving license, your passport, and your resident permit. You have different kind of insurance. Now, if if the car belongs to me, like it's not a rental car, if I have a casco, I have a traffic insurance. Now, the insure, my traffic insurance will bear the cost of the other car if I'm at fault, right? Now, if I'm not at fault, the other car's insurance will pay for my inch car. But now, if I am at fault, my car score will pay for my car, while my traffic insurance will pay for the other person's car. So that's why you need to have insurance, which is car score and traffic. Now, let's come to the renter. Now, in renter, we have different kind of agreements with the insurance company, right? Now, if eventually, as a renter, you had that with my car, if my casco for this year was like $1,000, now 
Now, if I spoil my insurance, my next year casco will be like two thousand dollars, like times two double. And if it happened three, two times in a year, next the next year, casco company will say that they will not do insurance for me anymore. So this is the reason why, as a renter, everybody that rents my car have to bear or take the responsibility of whatever happened. I tell them, if you have an accident, you can't spoil my insurance because even if I use my insurance, for me, it doesn't make any sense because next year, I still have to pay times two of it. It's as good as paying cash not to spoil the insurance. So I don't know, let's assume in a year, two, three accidents happen. So what will happen? Now, I will keep paying the same amount the times three of the next year, which is not possible. So every renter bears the burdens, the responsibility of accident caused by him or her. Car renting, like I said, in the in Turkey, the prime is, I think, is the first African renter in Turkey until date. And based on my experience in this field, car renting business is very good. It's very lucrative, it's very profitable. But there's a lot of risk behind it. Now, if you don't know the process, if you don't know how it's being done, it's not something you can just buy. You can't just buy it and say, okay, because the prime is renting car, let me just go and rent a car. It's not possible. And you might run at lost. Because first of all, you must know, you must know how the game is being played. Because uh, if I choose to give you a car for $100, I might choose to give the A $100 and give B $50. Because B is taken for one year, A is taken for one day. Now, in this aspect, it's quite different. Now, if you want to invest, you can come to us and say, okay, Peter, I have the funds. Now, let's join her together. Let's work together. I have other people we partner together. I have a lot of partners. People come to invest. I have investors that come to, okay, Peter, I have money. Let's, okay, let's buy a car on that the prime, let the prime run it. And we come to an agreement and say, okay, every month you get your paid. And if the car works, the car does not work, just an agreement, an agreement. So by the grace of God, there's no car we stay that have not have worked before. So we even need more investors. We need more cars at the office because we are running out of cars. So you can come to us and then we'll partner together. It's not a problem. If you have any further questions to ask, please reach out to us on our Instagram handle at Harimus Family TV. Guys, we are gradually getting close to a thousand subscribers. Thank you for the support. But if you are yet to subscribe, please do us a favor, smash the subscribe button and make sure you leave your notification bell turned on so you get notified each time we post a new video. And it's free of charge. Thank you guys for watching. My name is Shego Aremo and this is the Aremo's Family TV saying,